Hi, and welcome to the latest Girl Scouts of Northern Indiana, Michiana virtual program. My name is Coral, and today we'll be going over the Simple Meals badge for juniors. There are five steps in order to complete this, and those include one, step up your skill with a pro, two, whip up your favorite breakfast, three, fix a healthy lunch or dinner, four, create a delicious dessert, and five, make your own meal. So those are the steps that you need in order to complete this badge. Like I said before, I will be walking through, uh, through the steps with you today. And then um, I encourage you all to go out into the kitchen and make these meals for yourself and for your family. Okay, so I have a little confession. Some of you may or may not know, but I have never been into cooking. I've never been confident in the kitchen. Um, but over the last couple of months, I have become so confident in the kitchen that I find myself just whipping things up like crazy. And I just thought it'd be the perfect opportunity to share some of the meals and desserts that I have made with you girls. And I hope that this um, video inspires each of you to step it up in the kitchen, try some things out. Um, it's not always going to work out the first time you're going to fail. I've failed multiple times. I remember the first time I tried to make chicken. Um, it tasted like rubber. <laughs> um, but then I tried again and now I've been successful. Um, so today I'm just going to walk you through some steps for this badge and I hope you enjoy um, this video as much as I do. Okay, so our very first step is to take a tour of a kitchen with a professional. Um, this could be just someone who feels comfortable in a kitchen. It could be a chef. Um, it could be um, someone at your school, a caterer. Um, but since we're all uh, stuck at home, um, I'm just going to take you through a little tour of my kitchen. Um, and so hopefully this will kind of look familiar as to what your kitchen looks like. Um, also, um, on the website, there is a scavenger hunt of items that you could find in the kitchen. So you can pull that up and start to look for those items in your kitchen. So come on with me and we'll go for a little tour. So we'll start, hmm, we can start over here. So um, just your basic oven and stove um, and then also the microwave. I have my foil and some of my recycling as well as um, looks like some cooking spray and some utensils there. Um, I'll, let me just show you because I'm kind of a nerd, um, but I have a spoon and it has a sea turtle on it, my favorite animal. And then um, I also have spatulas and they are Harry Potter. So that's kind of exciting. You gotta have little fun things in your kitchen to help you get excited. Um, in here is all of my baking stuff, my olive oil, um, my spices, my vanilla, my salt, some salt shakers up there as well. Um, then if you come to this side of my kitchen, you'll see my wonderful refrigerator with snacks up on top. And then in my um, refrigerator, um, I just have some other things. You can see I see I have lots of butter. That's because I'm stuck at home and I'm cooking a lot. So I need lots and lots of butter. I've been going through it like crazy. Um, I have sparkling waters and then I have vegetables. There's some kale and some carrots. Um, I have string cheese and some bacon and some syrup. Um, just sort of the things that you kind of need. Um, and then if we come over here, spin you around, um, in this cabinet I have some medicine <laughs> um, and then it looks like this also was kind of the junk um, closet I don't know if any of you guys have any junk um, cabinets in your kitchen but I also have lots of peanut butter um, some honey and then I also have Nutella up there and then in this cabinet this is where I just have kind of like my pantry where food is that I might need and then over here um, it's just some more food stuff. So I have some mac and cheese, some muffin mixes, some hot sauce, just all sorts of things. Um, down here, I have my mixer and my Keurig and some vegetables over here and some um, bananas and apples. I have my wonderful panda who keeps me company. 
And then um, I have my sink and I have up here is just my um, bowls and plates and all my cups and mugs. Um, something fun about me is that I collect Starbucks mugs. And so this one is actually from Epcot. Um, so everywhere I go, I just buy a different mug so I can always remember where I've been. So that's kind of a fun fact about me. Then I have my dishwasher. And in here is my all of my silverware and mixing things. Um, over by the stove is where I keep my spatulas and my tongs and my wax paper. And then I also have foil and cutting boards over there as well. So that is my kitchen. And I hope you guys take a tour of your kitchen to see what is similar and what is different in your kitchen. Hi friends, so step number two is to fix up a quick breakfast meal. And I have decided to make egg um, burritos. Um, you can also ask your family what type of eggs that they like, um, but here's how I make my egg burritos. So first I take two eggs and I crack them into just my bowl here. Then I take my fork and I scramble them up. So they look something like that. Then I put them into my pan here. Just like that. And I'm going to put them on the stove. Okay, so my eggs are currently cooking in the pan on the stove, so I'm gonna go over and just check on them and scramble them up a little bit. I just like to move my eggs around. As they scramble. Looks good. Perfect. So here are my eggs all scrambled up. And now what I'm going to do is just put them inside of the burrito. So take them, put them in the burrito. So now I have my soft shell and my eggs. And I'm going to take some shredded cheese and I sprinkle it on there. And then because I like a little bit of flavor to it, I have some Frank's hot sauce. And I just sprinkle them on there. And then I have the perfect egg burrito. Ta-da! For breakfast, pretty simple. All right, friends, so I am going to be making a crispy chicken with sweet potato, sweet potatoes that are mashed up. So a mashed sweet potato, I guess you would call it. Um, so the first thing that I did is I washed my vegetables, so my green beans up for the side, as well as my um, sweet potatoes, and I peeled them. And then I just cut them up, just like you can see here. And I have them going in boiling water. So I'm gonna add these guys into that. And then I put on a spoon um, just on top of my pot over there um, so that it helps prevent the boiling from happening. Then the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take um, crispy onions and you're going to want to mesh them up, break them all up. 
just like so. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the sauce. So it calls for one tablespoon of honey. My honey is already mostly solids now, so I'm trying to work with this a little bit. So it calls for one tablespoon. Come on. I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And then you're supposed to take um, some Dijon honey mustard. So this is like almost two ounces of it. And you just put it on in there. I grabbed this spoon. I'm not sure where it ended up. I'll use this part. And you can kind of see the honey in there a little bit, and I'm just going to swirl it together. So we'll just make the mustard a little bit sweeter. Okay, so now you can kind of see that the color has gotten a little bit darker. It looks more like a mustard color. Um, so now the next step that I need to do is I'm going to cut open my chicken. These are just chicken cutlets. And of course I didn't get that quite right. Let's try again. And I'm going to pat my chicken dry. Clean this out. I'm just going to pat it dry. That looks pretty good. Then I'm going to take my foil and on one side of the foil I'm going to put my chicken down. Put the pretty side up. Okay. Then I'm going to take the honey mustard and drizzle it on top of the chicken. And then next I'll put on the crunchy um, onions. This is something new that I'm making tonight. I've never had this before. I'm pretty excited to see what it's going to taste like. And the crust I think is going to be delicious as well. Just putting it on there, making sure it's kind of even, not too thick in one area. So now that the green beans are on there, I've just taken green beans, washed them, dried them, put them on here, and put um, olive oil on them and then some salt. The chicken's on there as well. I'm going to put it in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes and check on it and see how it's doing. So the next step of the meal is to make the sweet mashed potatoes. You can kind of see the steam coming off of my pot. So the cubes of potatoes, um, there's a little bit of water, that's why it's hard to see, but um, it's, um, I've drained it and I've left a little bit of water in there because I find that it helps with the consistency. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it back on the stove and I'm going to use my masher and I'm going to mash up the sweet potatoes and then I'm going to add in two tablespoons of butter and a little bit of sour cream. So, um, over here, I'm and my masher is not where it normally is. I found my masher, we're in good hands now. I got a little nervous. So I'm just mashing up. I have not put any butter in there or sour cream. I just wanna mash it up a little bit. Okay, 
that actually the consistency looks really good there. So now let me put in two tablespoons of butter. And then a little bit of sour cream. This whole recipe is new. I've never made sweet mashed potatoes, nor have I made my chicken like this. I'm pretty excited to see how it all tastes. So, just so you guys can all see, um, this is just kind of what it looks like. It already kind of looks like sweet potatoes. It's a little runny. I think I might have left a little bit too much water in there, but I'm sure it will still taste delicious. Okay, so for the dessert, I thought it'd be really fun if we made monkey bread. Um, I'm not sure if you guys have ever heard of monkey bread, but I think it's delicious. And to add a little twist to it, we're going to cook it on a campfire. Um, so the ingredients that you will need, it called for um, biscuits that come in a tube. But the only thing I had at my house were these um, cinnamon rolls. So we're just going to try it with this today and see how that goes. Should be fine. Um, you're going to need some sugar, then some brown sugar. Um, you'll need a stick of butter. You'll need cooking spray. You'll need a knife and a cutting board to use to cut up your biscuits. You'll need a half cup measuring cup, um, a Ziploc baggie, and then some pieces of foil. And then you'll also need a campfire as well. So let's get started. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to make my mixture inside of this Ziploc baggie. And I'm gonna add half a cup of um, white sugar and half a cup of brown sugar. So I got my half a cup and I put it on in. Oh, just a half a cup. I love sugar. I don't know about you guys. I almost did a cup of sugar, but that's not what the ingredients call for. And then I need a half a cup of brown sugar. Looks good. And then I will zip this up. You can really use um, a, a gallon would probably be the best choice for size of bag. I think this is a little bit bigger than a gallon, but just what I have. So perfect. Okay. Now you're going to want to take your um, dough and open it. And it's supposed to pop. And whenever it pops, it terrifies me. But sometimes it doesn't pop on like it's supposed to. Okay, that's on the side. Nope. Okay. Might need to ask an adult to help you pop it. It's still not popping. I just opened it. Hmm. Let's try. There we go. It's starting to pop open. So then what I'm going to do is take it open like this. I want you to see my face. There we go. And it, these guys come just like that. And you're going to want to cube these. I've never done it with cinnamon rolls before, but I assume it's gonna be delicious anyway. So they are cubed up. They're probably gonna fall apart because they are like a cinnamon roll. And then you just take this and you toss it into your cinnamon and sugar. And then you just continue on until you've cut up all of the pieces. So I'm just gonna cut this. I could do two at once. So write in the comments if you've ever had um, 
at cinnamon rolls. Well, if you have had cinnamon rolls, please let me know. I love cinnamon rolls. Um, but if you've ever had monkey bread before, or if this is your first time ever hearing what monkey bread is. If you've had monkey bread before, have you cooked it on a fire or have you made it in the oven? I just thought it'd be really fun to get out of the house and make the monkey bread over a campfire because I am craving being outside. Okay, then I'm going to open up my next one. They're gonna pop. Nope, that's okay. To open it again. Okay, that's where the. There we go. Try to open up again. Oopsies. You guys have a favorite dessert that you like to cook for your family? Maybe it's a certain type of cookie or a cake. Anybody here love pie? I can tell you I am not a fan of pie. I've tried it. And the only, excuse me, the only kind I really kind of enjoy would be um, chocolate pie. I just love my sweets, I guess. Uh, just a couple more. That one's falling apart. That's okay. Okay. Whoopsies. Um, the recipe does call for cinnamon, but we don't need it because we have all the cinnamon from the cinnamon roll. Okay, bring you guys up a little bit. Oops, there we go. Grab my seat. So now what I'm doing is making sure the air is out, sealed up really, really well. And then I'm just gonna shake this to make sure that the cinnamon and sugar, the cinnamon and the brown sugar are coating the cinnamon rolls. Nice and coated. Very nice. Some of them um, kind of stuck together. That's okay. Okay. Looking good. So I'm going to set this aside. Then what the recipe said was to take foil and um, spray it with some kitchen spray. So I'm just going to spray it a little bit. And this is just to make sure that um, the monkey bread doesn't um, burn when it's inside the foil on the fire. Um, so that's sprayed a little bit. Let's spray another one. Okay, we'll see how much we actually need. I'm not quite sure. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab the um, rolls and I'm going to put them in the foil. Oh, these look so good. Mm, mm, so good. I'm trying to show you guys. Um, I don't know if you guys can see or not, but it's definitely coated up with lots of cinnamon and sugar. Okay. So I just put a little bit in there, just like that much. 
I'm gonna do the other one and then see, I think I'm gonna need probably a third packet of uh, foil for the monkey bread. I hope this turns out because this would be a really fun thing to make during the summertime at summer camp. I know there's um, different variations. I've made monkey bread um, in a Dutch oven um, and that's really good. But if this works in foil, mm, that would be wonderful. Okay, then I need one more. I think that would be good. Hands are all covered in cinnamon and sugar, but that's what makes cooking fun, right? Oops. Spit this down a little bit. Girls, this looks so good. It kind of reminds me of like pretzels, like the sugar, cinnamon sugar pretzels from Sam's or Annie Ann's or anything like that. So good. Okay. Let me go rinse my hands real quick because they're pretty gross. So hold on. Okay, I'm back, sorry about that. Um, so the one other thing that the recipe calls for is to take some sticks of butter, well, take a stick of butter, and just take little chunks of butter and put it inside. So I'm just assuming that, um, just to keep the moisture there. So we'll do that. We'll just, I'm gonna cut up just a little bit of butter in cubes put them in there. So not very thick, as you can see. I'm gonna cut that in half and then kind of put it right on in there. Probably do one more for that. I just have that, whoops. And then I just cut it in half. And then I'm going to take my foil If you ever made a foil dinner on a campfire, that's just what you're doing is packaging it up just like that. And there we go. And then I'm just gonna keep doing that with all three. So and then um, I'll go outside and cook it for, it sounded um, like seven minutes or so. So we'll see. Let's uh, see what happens. So what I've done here is I've just taken the foil packets and put them in the fire that's just coals and then put some uh, coals on top as well just to get that round heat all around it. We'll check it in a few minutes and see what happens. Step number five is make your own meal and I want to leave this step up to you girls to come up and be creative with different dishes that you can make for your family. What do your parents like? What does your brother or your sister like? Um, and then take all those ideas and look up recipes um, for what type of food you can make for your family. Um, at the end of this video, I will also be just showing you some pictures of some of the food that I have made, um, just to kind of show you some fun things. Um, I'm pretty impressed with myself, <laughs> but I will tell you it took a long time for me to even get to this point. So I um, hope you girls will share with me what you're making for your families. Um, and yeah, um, I wish you the best of luck with your step number five, creating your own meal. Um, and enjoy!